Miatek Blankowski, uh, thank you for helping explain what the ABB and GM project is with this energy storage from a, from a volt battery. Could you, uh, could you give us just a little bit of an overview of, of, of what this project is all about? Sure, thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, the project is in R&D stage, so we are still in, the, in early stage of the application into real systems. But basically what it is, is trying to reuse the batteries from the Chevy Volt, from the electric vehicle of GM, and find some other uses beyond its useful life for the electric vehicle. And what we find out from our research is that after the battery is used for electric vehicle application, we still have 70% remaining life in these batteries for other applications. So we really felt that there is potential there to use something that otherwise would end up in a landfill. What's the next step? Well, there are several of them. Obviously, the first one is to demonstrate this concept. And I think GM is doing this right now in their electric vehicle show that I think is running in San Francisco. Uh, so that would be off the grid demonstration that we can power, uh, I think, some uh, exhibition lights and maybe a tent that they have. But there'll be another step, a very important one, trying to find how this system works in actual on the grid application. And we are working with Duke Energy to see how this can be applied in some specific pilot locations on the Duke Energy grid. And we are very excited about this because, again, it will really show not only the concept of the technology, but it actually how it works in real life with real customers and how it works from the business point of view, how it works with the system, how it interfaces. So there's many other steps that we can perhaps learn from when we go into the actual commercial applications. And how long will that testing take place? Well, I mean, we're planning to start this sometimes early 2013, and will probably be several months, so I would say 2013, 2014, just to find out how these systems operate. As a director of technology for power products in North America, what do you see as the real potential here for the uses of this energy uh, storage system? Well, there's actually several, and I'm excited about this because uh, if you look at this, obviously the most immediate one is trying to find the emergency power when you have an outage. So you need some emergency power for whatever reasons. Uh, refrigerator, I mean, maybe you need to run an air conditioning or some other critical load. So that is immediate application. It's almost like uninterruptible power supply. But there, there are things goes a little bit beyond that. For example, if you look at the renewable energy, and particularly solar, I think, comes to mind, where the solar is really an intermittent source of power. I mean, if you look at the clouds passing by the photovoltaic array, or if you look at the fluctuations in the photovoltaic output, I say, if I can smooth out those fluctuations, I mean, I can have a stable power supply. And so the combination of that system with the PV array will really have like magic solution for residential homes. And this can power up to three, four, five homes at a time. So it really is a community kind of power that one can rely on. Peak shaving, we've heard about that. What, can you explain what that means and how this would work? Yeah, that's interesting. That is from the utility point of view. Because if you look from the Duke Energy point of view, they know that electricity prices are dynamic. Uh, they're not stable, uh, like you see on your electricity bill. Actually, they're very high during the peak hours, let's say 3, 4, or 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and they're probably very low at night. And they've been always looking at all sorts of solutions, how to smooth out and make it more stable. So again, utilities can lower their generation and obviously lower the cost of operating the power plants. So it's very attractive from this point of view. Why is it that ABB has decided to become a global leader in this particular area? Well, we are looking at new industries, and we are always open to new technologies and obviously commercial opportunities as well. It naturally fits to power and automation that we are leader at. I mean, we are the global company that we know really what the power and automation is all about. So it's a natural fit. The other thing what I like about this is that GM is more on the consumer kind of industry where you have electric vehicles. So it's a nice uh, marriage or team between the industrial power systems and the, the commercial end of the industry. So we like the teaming up with the GM for that reasons. There's another reason for this. For example, 
uh, if you look at the ABME mission, we are really very committed to environmental stewardship. And I, uh, I'm very much for the environment. And I like the fact that we are using the batteries that have been already end of life in the electric vehicle, but they still have useful life in them for other applications. So it's almost like a recycling kind of concept, and I'm very much for it. What other things is, is, is ABB doing with, with, with uh, electric vehicles in this, in this EV space? Well, EV space is an interesting one because uh, it sort of bridges, again, the automation kind of technologies, the power electronics, but also direct current. And ABB, again, is very much committed to direct current technologies. We actually pioneered a direct current for high voltage transmission back in 1950s. We are the first one coming with commercial systems like this. We now uh, very strongly uh, trying to commercialize uh, DC technologies for other applications like data centers. So the batteries from electric vehicles, again, is a natural fit for us, and we know how to handle direct current. Uh, so uh, we, in electric vehicles specifically, have a, a very active program in what we call fast charging of electric vehicle. And we're actually selling and, and shipping quite a lot of these fast chargers throughout Europe. And we'll be doing this in the US very shortly. And we believe in the electric vehicles for the future. And a DC technology is the way to go. Great. Well, thank you very much for being with us today. Thanks very much.